Welcome you back to the Patrick Netherton Show right here on 1130 The Tiger, 103.3 FM. And we're pleased to be joined by the second most famous Patrick in the Shreveport Bossier media. He is the man, the myth, the legend. We love him to death. Patrick Dennis, uh, meteorologist for KTBS. My friend, how are you? I'm doing fine. I'm doing fine. How are you doing? I'm great. Um, all right. So obviously the reason we have you on is because Monday is a, a pretty historic event. Uh, with the, the full solar eclipse coming. Um, first of all, how long ago did y'all at KTBS really start working on this? Because obviously we know the dates. We know, you know, we know the next one is going to be in 30 years or whatever. So when did y'all yeah. really start kind of uh, locking in on this and starting to hone in on it? Well, you know, you, you, you start really realizing how big it is. It, it's not us necessarily. You look at the community. The ones that are trying to do it, to be very honest with you, to promote their communities and to – I use the word take advantage of it, and you absolutely should. We were actually doing stories on this, gosh, it was probably uh, into last year, 2023 at some point. It could be almost nine-plus months ago. And it's really because of Texarkana being in our viewing market right. is because they are in the path of totality, and they have a unique situation. Their, their marketing is as if you can stand in two states at one time and watch the eclipse go on in totality. And, uh, and I've also, you know, I follow things elsewhere, too, specifically Waco, Texas. And Waco, Texas has been talking about this for the past two years, it seems like. So, but for us here, uh, we really started picking up the pace at the end of last year. Then we got to the first of the year. And then we started putting a focus on it to say, okay, this is the game plan. The only problem is now there's a little something called Mother Nature that mm -hmm. wants to mess it up some with it. And I jokingly said a while back, I said, hey, guys, you know, the solar eclipse is going to go on. But, you know, it only takes a cloud in the sky to mess it up. Right. And, uh, but that, 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 and that's our concern right now, obviously. But it's a big deal. It's going to happen no matter what. Right. Well, the good news is, I guess, even if there's cloud cover, right, it's still going to get yeah. dark. Mm -hmm. It's not like it's, you know, you're not going to be able to feel the effects. You're just not going to be able to actually look at the sun when it happens. Right, right. And first of all, as a fair good, good disclaimer, do not yep. look at the sun without do not look at proper the sun. eyewear. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, uh, okay, so you're, you're right about that. You, we still would be able to feel some of the effects because, you know, just like during the daytime we have clouds around, it still appears to be bright some outside because of how powerful the sun is. You will probably be able to feel it. You won't be able to feel it to that full extent uh, with it because of the clouds being around. And I'm going to say this, too, real quick, too. Folks, even though we're saying mostly cloudy to cloudy skies, we all know that there could be breaks in those clouds. I'm expecting low-level clouds around. Hopefully we'll see some breaks in those clouds by early afternoon before rain moves in. I uh, jokingly made a comment today on the air that it's like the eclipse is the portal to some weather changes. And I jokingly said portal because, you know, it's an eclipse and, right. you know, conspiracy theories and stuff. But anyway, we got some big weather changes next week. Uh, you know, my advice is if you want to take the eclipse in, regardless if it's cloudy or not cloudy, get as far away as you can from everybody else. And what I mean by that is we have been watching old videos of some of the eclipses. People are all together, and they're applauding. I want to get out in nature, and I want to hear where it really makes a difference. With the animals, they think the sun is setting at that time. And then all of a sudden they realize, no, it didn't, because they don't have a calendar to look at like we have. Get out in nature. Listen to the birds. See if animals react a little bit different. That, to me, is how you should really try to enjoy Monday if you're able to do it. Well, you are you are an avid outdoorsman, and you have your own outdoors channel, which, by the way, plug yourself, if you don't mind. Tell us where we can oh, find all of your uh, outdoor stuff. Well, my show is called Bayou Outdoors 365. Proud to say that this is 10 years that I've had it. You can watch it on Saturday morning. Set your DVR. Get up early Saturday morning, 6 a.m. on KPXJ CW 21. And then I'll share things typically also my uh, Facebook page uh, there. You can find it, Value Outdoors 365, and uh, then also the YouTube channel as uh, also with it. And I'll share some videos on there too. But, you know, that's really what, what, what I was able to do. Unfortunately, I have to work that day. I'm going to be stuck in the studio, and, uh, but uh, we, we're going to have, have coverage of it that day. And it doesn't matter if it's cloudy here or not. We're still going to have coverage because we'll show you also what's going on elsewhere across the country. Uh, all right, let's back up a little bit. And I even texted you this. My number one complaint about all the eclipse coverage is simply the time. Uh, I know I it's know, Monday. I know. And you're, I know, you're, 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 
Uh, You're fine. You made a valid point. I brought it up to somebody yesterday. I said, you know, Patrick texted me. You know what? He makes a very valid point. Yeah, like, because I I know it's Monday. I've, y'all have beaten me (laughs) over the head that it's Monday that the eclipse, but. Are you sure it's Monday? I I know. It's Monday. But I don't, is it 9 a.m.? Is it 5 p.m.? When is the eclipse (laughs) actually going to occur here in Shreveport? Okay. So, and and, and again, it's a rarity that I'm going to go and say Patrick Netherton made a good point. Thank you. Uh, No. Thank you. Okay. So, partial partial solar eclipse that's whenever the moon first starts her shadow however it is starts to move over the sun okay and uh it's really the moon moves in front of the sun that starts at 12 27 26 p.m for shreveport okay so let's say 12 27 right. p.m totality which by the way we don't have totality in shreveport we have 98.17 percent almost totality correct we're, we're, we're almost there completely right that occurs at 147 p.m so basically, starts at twelve twenty-seven. That occurs at one forty-seven. So you're looking about an hour and twenty. Is that about right? An hour and twenty minutes after it starts, that's when we will have our peak. And then does, I'm assuming it takes another hour for it to move across, right? Like to finish roughly about another through? hour, an hour and twenty minutes, because it partial yeah. ends at three o seven. By the way, I I honestly thought this was like a four minute deal. Like, well, and I guess okay. the so, totality so, is technically in that kind of four minute area, but like, I thought this is like, okay, woo, we're done. Let's go and get out of here. Okay. Um, so, right, three right, hours. Give that's, an that's impressive. Well, I'll give you an example. So, totality, you're right on that. Uh, a lot of these towns want to market themselves as the longest amount of totality for mm-hmm. the eclipse. In order for you to be the longest, you have to be pretty much dead center in the middle of it. Like, Texarkana, for example, has totality of two minutes and 24 seconds. So that shows you a little bit, 224. We won't have totality here. We'll have a little bit of a glow still on the edge. So please, in Shreveport, if you can't see the eclipse, keep your glasses on the entire time. But if you're in a place like Texarkana and you reach totality, you actually can take your glasses off while you're in totality so you can see the full effects of that corona on the edge of it. It looks like a ring. Right. It's going it's gonna, to it's gonna, it's gonna look like Bilbo Baggins going through there looking for his, his precious ring. And so, anyway, quality, I'm quality so Lord of the Rings it. drop you got going on there, Patrick. I like it. I like, well, hey, look, you're appeasing uh, the nerd inside <laughs> of me because I am a huge <laughs> nerd. So I appreciate that. I expect everybody in totality when it happens to look up and say, my precious. My precious. Yeah. So um, anyway, so, so that's what you have there. I'm trying to look to see. I had some graphics up here in front of me because, you know, we uh, there's there's uh, other ones, too, like Atlanta, Texas. I'll give you an example. And mm-hmm. our friend over, in, our friends in Jefferson, Texas, yeah. they're not in totality, but they're going to be so close to it, uh, with it. And they, but if you're right on the edge of totality, but you're but you're in it, you're only going to experience for a very short amount of time. The maximum amount of time is just over four minutes, and the minimum is obviously barely anything uh, for it. But Ida Bell, Oklahoma, that area there, I'm pulling it up. Four, four minutes, nineteen seconds. There you go. That into Queen, Arkansas, and that area there, if you just draw a line through it, we got these maps we'll be posting over sure. and over again. Right in the middle of it is the best. People ask me, is it worth driving somewhere for it? Absolutely, it's worth driving somewhere. But I can't guarantee you in the Arklatex anything other than cloud cover. I mean, it's, so, so you said it's your own risk. I personally would much rather get in my car and drive up I-49 to Texarkana because that road is not traveled that much. Right. If you drive I-20, much more traffic, and you would never get over towards Tyler – you know, you, you, you may have more vehicles now. I don't know what it's going to be like because there may be people changing their plans at the last minute because of the weather and saying, you know what, it's not worth me driving. To yeah, go do I, it. I am I'm uh, curious. I, I read, I was watching something, it may have been with on y'all's station, um, I was watching something about uh, a guy was like, yeah, we just stayed mobile and we, you know, we found out where we thought it would be clear and we ended up watching it in a cemetery. And I'm like, well, that's not creepy at all. A uh, uh, solar eclipse in a cemetery. I'm sure no one, no hands started popping out of the graves. Like that's a good, good well, call. They, you know, the other thing we did stories on it too, like the other day, it was, it was one like, man, these people are all getting married. I'm like, do you really want to get married under yeah. a total solar eclipse? To me, that does not seem like something that's going to give me positive energy. The only thing I know is don't buy a, a giant Venus flytrap uh, during the solar eclipse because then it turns into the little shop of horrors and it feasts on human blood uh, and all that. You don't want to, you don't want to no. do any of that. We, we did one earlier today, a story earlier today about animals and nature and enjoying it. And for some reason, the guy says in there that says, yes, apparently the turtles, some type of turtles at some place start mating. And I said, OK, thanks. I'm like, how, how does that happen? I mean, because it's almost like it's, it's the, the solar eclipse to these animals 
it's like the sun is setting, then it comes back up. I'm right. like, what trick? I don't know. Sometimes I personally think that as the news media and stuff like that, we are digging for any sure. story possible. And sometimes you're, you're I think mining, God, just stop. you're mining and mining stop. and mining. You're getting you're getting to the core of the earth at this point when it comes to stories on this. Um, that is an interesting point, though, Patrick. And a lot of people have mentioned. Um, what about your pets during the eclipse? Your dogs, your cats, etc. Um, you know, making sure that they stay safe while this is going on. Make sure they have protective. Go- well, no, I'm not even joking. Well, I mean, uh, I, you know, I know, I know. They're you know, the the dogs are not supposed to be looking at the sun either, for that matter. But but, um, but you can't because you're not going to be able to stop that right. or anything like that. Look, look I mean, I'm, I'm being very honest with you. It's like for me, I'm not that worried about any of that for my pets. Around. They they may act a tad bit different because they may think that it's getting dark, so right. I need to go outside and take care of business. It's dinner time. I mean, my dog, oh. I mean, she is the smartest dog. She might be thinking, wait a minute, whoa, 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 yeah. it's getting dark. It's dinner you know, that time. That's right. Dinner time, time to feed me. But, but you know, and I, I'll be truthful with you, Patrick, and people that watch me, and I can I say some things on TV, and I talk to people about it, and I'm a big, uh, I'm a big uh, critic of different things when it comes to coverage on different things like that. We've been doing some stories, but I want to emphasize to people that we do stories on how is the eclipse going to affect cell phone coverage, and here's the problem. It's not that the eclipse itself is affecting cell phone coverage. It's the effect of the, fa- the fact that people are going to be using their right. cell phones more in certain areas. That's why you're going to have that and a, and problem. A hu- there. It's the same thing when you go to a concert and your phone doesn't work in a concert venue. It's because there's right. 20,000 other people all trying to – they're all clogging up the cell towers at the same time. At, at, um, the, at, at, the, at the exact same time. So, yeah. you know, remember that, that that's not – that's why that's happening. And number two with it is that, you know, the folks – unfortunately, we did this to ourselves. We create the panic and get everybody to go to the grocery store or right. buy up all the gas when the reality of it is there's plenty of it there. But we're all, you know, reacting a certain way to it. I'm going to be very interested to see how this all turns out because with the weather situation that we have, are the communities going to see as much as they expected? I don't think they're going to. But I do hope it's a success for communities, and I know some people in some towns are like, not in Shreveport because we're not in totality, but some towns over in Texas and Arkansas are like, man, they say all these people are coming to town. It's not worth it for us. Well, it, it's a big economic impact. Sure, it's and, a you know, they, 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 they put a lot in their baskets on this here, and if, if they can't cash in on it, they've spent a lot of money on it. So I'm hoping it works out and everybody can enjoy it, go and support these communities, and do it uh, for it. But, of course, through the weekend and into Monday, we'll have – people posted and we have live coverage of it on monday technically starting with our midday show at 11 o'clock in the mm-hmm. morning it goes all the way until 2 p.m we'll be off the air briefly we'll be back on the air at 3 p.m but uh we're, we're on the air no matter what no matter if it's rain and it's cloudy it's sunny we're going to be on the air covering it well it won't be sunny because there's you know an eclipse um last thing patrick because you uh, are uh, because uh, you are a big outdoorsman um you know uh, we know fishermen love the lunar cycle and we fish in this time yeah. or we hunt full moons and all that solar eclipse have anything to do with any fishing hunting any of that stuff you know i i wouldn't be surprised at all if it doesn't have some type and effect on it mm-hmm. in the sense of again the same thing with animals and others is that it's tip- a lot of times if you go with somebody fishing, they'll tell me right now, Patrick, we need to fish in the morning first thing, or they usually don't say the evening, but like I, when I go deer hunting, when's the most productive time for deer hunting? In the morning, in the evening. So the same thing, if you start to have those animals thinking that the sun is in the process of setting, and all, they're going to act different. The fish are going to act different. Mm-hmm. The animals are going to act a little bit. How different? Everything's going to be based upon a certain area there with it. That's why I say if you can enjoy the aspect of nature and just listen, get away from as much man-made sounds as possible, I think you're going to be able to hopefully see some type of change. I would love to be on one of our deer hunting ranches we have access to over in Texas right in the middle of it because I want to see how those animals, if they change up or act differently. And I think they'll, I think they'll poke their heads out of the woods. Well, after you mentioned Jefferson, I think I'd like to enjoy a smoked animal during the, uh, the middle of the eclipse. That sounds like the I, I, best I, one for me. I, I, I think we know somebody over there. You can swing yeah. by. If you do by chance to do that, you got to bring me some back. No, no doubt about that. <laughs> Patrick, you're the best. Thank you so much for your time, brother, and, uh, and filling us Thank all you. in. Uh, have a good show today. Y'all have fun, and uh, we look forward to catching up with you soon. Appreciate it. Okay, man. Thanks. All right. That's uh, Patrick Dennis, KTBS meteorologist.